Hello YouTube, thank you for stopping by. As always, please click like if you happen to enjoy this video, please click on subscribe, and if you would like to be notified when I publish future videos, just click on that bell-shaped notify button. Additionally, I'd love to hear from you, so be sure to leave me a comment and please share this video with anyone else you think might enjoy it as well. Alrighty then, in this video I'm using the photos that I took while doing a replacement and upgrade of a wall outlet or receptacle and converting it into a dual gang wiring box with two outlets which feature built-in USB charging ports. I'm making a slideshow video of these pictures so I can share the information on YouTube and I hope you find it informative. Additionally, it should go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways, electricity can kill you. Big surprise, right? Not only that, but it's going to hurt like hell the whole time that you're dying. So, I would highly recommend that if you do not know what you're doing, that you hire somebody who does. I will not be held responsible for anything that you do or any subsequent damages that may occur. If you injure or kill yourself doing something like this, don't come crying to me. If you burn your house down, that's on you. Simply put, I'm not responsible for anything that you do. Got it? Good. Let's move on. I noticed that my wife was using an outlet adapter to get a couple USB chargers at her hobby desk. It was a bit clunky, so I figured it was time for an upgrade. I had installed the outlet back when we were doing a house remodeling project, and I thought that a single receptacle would be sufficient, but apparently it wasn't. Although she has a power strip that is plugged in under the desk, this outlet gets more use than I had anticipated. In the top socket of the outlet, I have plugged in a circuit tester. It's a great tool and fairly inexpensive. It shows that there is power, and the two amber lights show that it is wired correctly with respect to phase, neutral, and ground. In the bottom socket of the outlet, I have plugged in the transmitter half of a circuit breaker finder tool set. It transmits a signal that can be detected with the other half of the tool set over at the breaker panel. This is the second half of that circuit breaker finder tool pair. Although I already know where that circuit breaker actually is, I figured this would be a good opportunity to show off this tool and how it works. So with the transmitter side plugged into the outlet and transmitting, you simply turn on the finder portion and run it past the breakers until it beeps and the light goes out. Once we pass the finder over the correct breaker, the finder starts beeping and the LED goes dark. We've found the breaker. With the breaker finally turned off, the lights go out on the testing tools that were plugged in. Those tools get unplugged and now it's safe to remove the outlet cover. With the outlet cover removed, we can now loosen and remove the screws holding the outlet into the wiring box. The outlet is now removed from the wiring box. Now to disconnect the wires from the outlet. With the outlet removed, I straighten and examine the wires looking for any damage. And since this wiring box was added after the house was built, it's considered a old work style wiring box. What this basically means is that it uses clamps to hold itself against the drywall, and it's fairly easy to remove. There are also wiring boxes that are nailed directly to the wall studs as the walls are being built. These are called new work style wiring boxes. They are much more difficult to remove without damaging the wall, but it is possible. You'd have to use other tools like a Dremel, maybe a drill, maybe some other knives and other cutting implements may be required, as well as a lot of patience. In fact, I should probably make a different video just for that eventuality. And here the wiring box has been removed and pulled out of the wall. It is important to understand how the wiring box clamps function to ensure that you can get them to release their hold on the drywall and fold over against the wall of the wiring box so that it can be removed. Functional understanding is also important so that you do not unscrew the clamps so far that they detach from the wiring box completely. While this would not prevent you from removing the box, it would, however, render the box inoperable and you would not be able to reuse it later on should you choose to do so. With the wiring box removed, I do a quick check for obstructions. We're talking about studs, wires, pipes, etc. that would make widening the hole in the wall more difficult. Now that I've verified that the area is clear of obstructions, I now measure and mark the wall for cutting a wider opening so that the new dual gang wiring box will fit. Here the drywall has been cut and the hole is now wide enough 
to accept the dual gang wiring box. I am reusing an older but still viable dual gang wiring box that I saved from when I tore out my old garage. No waste. The wire is pushed through the access hole in the wiring box at the top, the wiring box inserted into the hole that was just widened, and then the wiring box gets clamped to the drywall by tightening the mounting screws. These are the new outlets that will be installed, complete with built-in, fast charge capable USB charger ports. I pre-wire the outlets together, binding the two neutral terminals together, then the two phase terminals, as well as the two ground lugs. Here the phase, neutral, and ground wires from the wiring box are connected to the pair of outlets that have been pre-wired together. The wires get tucked and folded back into the wiring box and the outlets get screwed into place as well. The outlets are now installed and a new outlet cover has been mounted. The circuit breaker gets turned back on and the outlets and USB charger ports all test out okay. Mission accomplished. Okay, I guess that's it for this video. Remember, please click like if you happened to enjoy this video. If you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate it if you would please click on subscribe. And if you would like to be notified when I publish future videos, just click on that bell-shaped notify button. Additionally, I'd love to hear from you, so be sure to leave me a comment and please share this video with anyone you think might enjoy it as well. Bye for now.